Hello. When I work socks from the toe up, I always do a short row heel. I don't like to start with eight or 10 stitches at the very tip and then work out with increases. I prefer this short row toe method and I'm going to show you how I do that. To start, I do a provisional cast on with half of the number of stitches that I need. So for this particular sock, I want 72 stitches. Half of that is 36. So I have done a provisional cast on with 36 stitches. The provisional cast on that I use, I've done a separate tutorial video on, and I will link that in the description box below if you would like to see how I work my provisional cast on. For this, I recommend using whatever provisional cast on you like and are comfortable with. So you do that with your stitches. And then immediately from your cast on, you start working your short rows. In my case, I like to use Arna's short row method, which he has described in a couple of videos. And I also did another video on that method. So I will also link to it in the description box. Basically, you start with a provisional cast on on ha half of your stitches, and then you work a short row just like you would for a heel. Knit across, leaving one stitch unworked at the end of every row until you're down from 36. In my case, I would do it down to about 12 stitches unworked and then short row back up to the beginning. So this is how I start my short row toe up socks. Here I've worked the first half of my short rows. Here at the bottom, you can see my provisional cast on. And then I've worked down, doing one stitch less on each row until I have 12 stitches unworked in the center. So I have 12 short rows stitches on each needle. And then in the center, I have 12 stitches unworked. I did forget to mention at the beginning that before I actually start the short rows, after the provisional cast on, I do one complete row of knitting to give myself a base row. And then I start the short rows after that. Depending on what provisional cast on you use, you may or may not need to do that. And then use whatever short row method you are comfortable with for the short rows. Like I said, I use the method that Arna from Arna and Carlos uses, and I use it both on my toes and on my heels, the same short row method. So here I am, I'm down to the center 12 stitches, and now I'm going to work my way back up to the end. Here I've finished my short rows. So again, here along this edge is where my provisional cast on is. I worked short rows down to 12 stitches up here. And then I started working back up all the way to my 36 stitches up here. And now I have the toe of my sock. What I will do next is take these stitches that are on hold and transfer them onto needles. And depending on how you start your short rows, you may wind up right here, ready to start around the edge. Or in my case, I have one short row stitch left unworked here at the very end. I'm going to start knitting around in a circle and then when I when I get back to there in the circle, then I'll get back around and work it together to finish up that very last short row. So here, I'm going to transfer these stitches onto my other needles. Okay, I have my provisional stitches on my other needles and now I'm gonna pull out my provisional cast on and I'm gonna go right from where I finish the short rows onto the first provisional stitch and knit around to the other side where I have my last short row stitch still hanging. 
Okay, so I've worked around to the end of the that round where my last short row stitch is left hanging. I'm going to add in a marker, which will be at the on the side of my foot here coming up from the short rows and then work that last short row closure. And then I'm going to do one more round back to this orange marker. Okay, now I'm coming back around again to my orange marker and I have placed a green marker on my other short row heel to mark that spot. Now, sometimes when you work off of a provisional cast on, you'll have either one too many or one too few stitches. In my case, I ended up with one too few. So on this next pass, I'm going to make another stitch here to make up for the stitch I am missing. So now I have finished my toe. That's what it looks like. And I'm going to join in my main color. I did my toe in a contrasting color like I did for these socks. And I like to join the contrast color on the opposite side. So here's my toe color tail. I'm going to add in my contrast color on this side. That way I have a tail on each end so that if there's any holes or looseness in this join here, at the top of the short rows, I can take my tail and go back in and tighten those up. Here I've joined my main color and I'm ready to knit the rest of my sock. With the toe done this way, it doesn't matter which is the top and which is the bottom. So if you're doing a stitch pattern on the top of your stock, like here, this is where you would decide to start that stitch pattern and you can differentiate top and bottom. If you're doing a plain sock, you can just knit in the round up until you get to the heel. And then that's the point at which you have to decide, okay, which is the top and which is the bottom because obviously the heel's gonna go on the bottom side. So just to recap, to do this short row toe, you start with half of the number of your total stitches for your sock and you do a provisional cast on with that half number. In my case, my sock is 72 stitches around and I did my provisional cast on on 36 stitches. So you start with your 36 stitches with the provisional cast on. You work your short rows down to about a third. So I have had 12 left unworked. And then you work the short rows back up so that you get this nice little toe cup here. Then you take your provisional stitches and put them on two needles and release them. Join in the round and start your sock. That's it. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.